So in that last little bit of the turn onto the runway, I actually used the tailwheel lock. So full forward stick allows the tailwheel to free caster. The concern then is once you get onto that center line, you wanna make sure you've relocked the rudder to the tailwheel. So a little bit forward on the taxi. And you can see I'm pumping the rudder pedals back and forth to try to get the rudder and the tailwheel hooked back up again. They're just hooked with springs. So I'm just feeling for that tension. And then I start to add power to go. Power up again is from full reverse. So I've got the throttle all the way back with the beta unlocked. So I'm going to come forward. As I come forward, you'll see the engine rev down. You'll see the RPM rev down. And then as I get to the beta portion, I'm feeling with my, my wrist to see when I get past the beta lock. Right about the time I get through the beta lock portion, you can see I can unlock or I can relock the beta because we'll now be flying in a second. And you can see the eyebrow light on that top console that says beta turn off. So now the motor's at idle, so that's the lowest power setting of the day, and then we're gonna add power to go through. As I add power, as we talked about before, we're just pouring gas into the combustion chamber. So as a result, until the engine accelerates, there's way too much gas, and there's a tendency to overheat. So you're adding power, letting the temperature spike and come back down, adding power, letting the temperature spike and come back down. Bottom right, it's gonna be up and then back down, and then up and then back down. Limit here is 660 degrees finally you get to where you can actually get to full power and uh, get ready to go. You can also see in this moment I reach down, take my hand off the throttle, reach down, just make sure that we're at that forward limit on the propeller because I wasn't sure that the propeller was revving up as fast as I expected it to. There's that same takeoff one more time shot by Quentin from his shop. Watch the uh, propeller. You can see the uh, RPM oscillations during spool up. So here's the whole thing one more time, a little bit closer to actual real time, so you can kind of see how things progress on this first takeoff in, what, four years. So with that climb rate, it was a short climb up to the base of the clouds. Uh, once we got there, pulled the power back to something representing cruise power as uh, this whole thing is a buildup for that cruise leg uh, going down range back to Texas. And then it's uh, as many laps as we dare uh, from a oil leak standpoint uh, to try to make sure that we understand uh, that the oil temperature is under control with this new oil cooler configuration. And then the last test point was this uh, this new hydraulic pump uh, configuration. So I haven't gone into it with a whole lot of detail yet, uh, but uh, to summarize, uh in order to deal with some previous issues with the hydraulic pump, the idea was that after reaching cruise altitude, we'd turn the uh, hydraulic pump off with the assumption that the hydraulic pressure would hold well enough to keep the gear in the bays or the up locks, which are those little latches that grab and hold the main gear up or and the inner gear door latches, uh, which hold the inner gear doors up, uh, would be positive to hold the gear once the hydraulic pressure came down and they started to rest on those latches. So you can see turning the hydraulic pump off so if you look on the right side of the cockpit, you can see the hydraulic pressure bleed down. And then it reaches the point where the micro switch fires that would normally turn the hydraulic pump on, which turns on all the eyebrow lights. 
informing the pilot there's something wrong with the system. In this case, the thing that's wrong is that the hydraulic pump is turned off so the pump won't cycle. And then if you look at the left side of the cockpit, you can see the in-transit lights uh, for all three gear turn on, as well as the inner gear door lights which indicates that the gear have come unstowed. Uh, we can make the assumption that the uh, inner gear doors are open. Then it simply reached down, turned the hydraulic pump back on, at which point the system pumps up, the gears suck back up into their wells, pulling the doors up and pulling the inner doors up, which turns off the in-transit lights. So over the entire flight, the oil temperature was slowly climbing. Uh, the normal oil temperature would be more like 65 to 70 degrees uh, Celsius. The limit is 85 degrees with uh, very little conservatism built into that. So determining that the uh, oil cooler was unsatisfactory, uh, decided to RTB so that uh, Quentin and the guys could take a look. Quick note, uh, take a look at that tailwheel gear door.